and welcome to the NBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. I have no context for what we're about to talk about. I feel so naked and alone. Indeed. Me too, my friend. Me too. Also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello. Whatever is going to be today is just... I can already see a <laughs> Norman pulling uh, a certain uh, yell. Oh god. Uh, what, what oh, like a Wilhelm scream? Here, here's Norman yelling. Oh god, I, I can't play it, but um, you, you... Just do it. Do it. Oh man, no, you're not going to play it because stuff, but yeah, oh man. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to have a discussion. The discussion is going to be why G5 isn't doing so well compared to G4. And yeah, that, that is a good question there because by this time around, logically speaking, G5 should have gained a, a bit of traction but not so, and why? So, before we head in, let's give a bit of context. Uh, G5 came out a, a while ago, like with their first movie named My Little Pony, A New Generation, uh, that came out in September 24th of 2020? 2021, yes. Um, it's a co-production between Entertainment One and Boulder Media. So the show was accepted pretty well. Like it did well, um, pop up on Netflix, and yeah, I remember it came out on Netflix. Um, that that's kind of interesting. So um, it popped up on Netflix, and it got in the top ten worldwide. So that's very impressive. And uh, they they got a lot of quote unquote celebrities, um, Vanessa Hudgens, Kimiko Glenn, James Marston, Sophia Carson, and Lisa Koshi. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's when it all started. Um, fans were fans were okay with it. Like they they were entertained. They 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 enjoyed the movie. And the movie looks pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. And I I think yeah, after that it was a long hiatus before um Hasbro announced anything else. So the anything else part is going to be where I drop off because I was so confused with what's going to happen next. So before we carry on um, Silver, what about G5? Like, do you enjoy it and why not? Well, I do enjoy it, but Norman, I, I have to critique the way we're phrasing this question. It's assuming G5 is doing poorly, but what are we basing that on? Comparing it to G4. I think we're basing but it that's... on the uh, amount of, uh, how do I put it, uh, response that the community in general has. Like, when but G4 we're... came out, it was like a giant bang, like a lightning in a bottle. A giant bang, but not on the very first episode, or dare I say, the, even the first season. There was a start, but I, I only joined the fandom, or really discovered the show, just as season two was starting up. And, well, I don't know... When did you two join? Uh, I joined sometime in the, uh, what was it? I think season two already ended and it was somewhere in uh, season three. Or the season three, something like that. Uh, ah, yes. okay. Oh, no, no. Norman, you, you, your join time, so to speak. Um, as for me, uh, when I really, really got into it, hook, line, and sinker was... I, I think what got me saying that, oh, wow, this is awesome, was season one when the CMC's their stage show. 
Remove. Okay, but had the was that as it just came out, or were you sort of marathoning the whole season? That was kind of the quote unquote last episode I saw before I had to wait for a new episode. And mind you, this was on ah. YouTube. On the YouTube's ah, good old YouTube's. And then like I, I kind of left off of it, but what got me in was uh, season two, lesson zero. So not lesson zero. Um, Luna. The Luna. Oh, Luna Eclipse. Yep. That, that was the episode that says, okay, I need to do something. Hmm. Okay, so what I want to establish right off the bat is that we are looking at the entirety of G4 and recognizing a rather stunning accomplishment, especially in gaining an audience far outside the intended demographic. But G5 has had a very different start and a very different uh, appearance mm. with a movie, break, special, break, eight episodes, break, uh, upcoming, I, actually this video might, co- this uh, podcast might come out just as the new holiday special is about to come out and then another break. Mm. So right off the bat, it's a very different style of presentation. I don't know if you can compare it the same way metrics wise to G four. That, that's that's also one of the other reasons why I want to bring this up because why the format like why why do it that way? Because to me, doing it the traditional way, <laughs> maybe I'm an old fogey and saying uh, back things were better <laughs> back in my days, but uh, in this case, I feel like it is because well. Right, right? Oh no! Uh, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting. No, 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 no problem, no problem. Because um, what I'm trying, what I was trying to say is because uh, with the constant retention that we have with quote unquote the seasons and how it was released by weekly, it was kind of an exciting thing where oh God, yeah, I I can't wait to s- uh, sit down, uh, have my cereal and watch the new episode, and oh, uh, have that discussion point where we kind of have a week before the new uh, episode comes in. Like, oh yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, I can't wait for this to happen or that to happen and so on. Well, I too, I wonder if companies are, are starting to move away from the weekly release format because they're seeing diminishing returns. I mean, streaming has become a much bigger presence and there is a story behind the story of the very harsh demand schedule by Netflix. That's true. But at the same time, too, uh, the show, if you binge watch it, like how um, Ponies did with its eight episode run for quote unquote season one, I guess, or season one. Chapter right? two, they call it. Yeah, chapter two. Yeah, okay. So, like, it kind of diminishes, diminishes the interaction because a good, a, a good example of this was Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6, Stone Ocean. Not many people are talking about it. Like, not many memes are coming out about Stone Ocean compared to um, Part 5, uh, the Gangstars. Like, that one... Uh, sorry, um, that one was called, if I remember right, uh, Golden Wind. Uh, that that one had a lot of people waiting, watching, getting excited, doing memes and so on. And and that was bi-weekly. This one right now, with how it's released, I feel like it kind of waters down the interaction. Like, people are not really going to talk about hey uh, have you watched this episode yet oh this episode happened blah 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 spoilers so yay not going to talk about it and so on feels like that's happening yeah it's unfortunately because uh, this is basically the result when you decide to just dump the entire series that you currently have on a platform have the people consume everything one go the whole binge watching thing and then you just have them sit there and have them wait for the next product. Like, it's... That's not... That's kind of like overeating. The opposite of intermittent fasting. <laughs> now, 
Well, as we're already on the topic of Netflix, uh, apparently the the production schedule they demanded was so harsh, the production studio had to had to put out eight episodes before they'd even seen the movie. Oh wow! Yeah, think about that for a minute. Yeah, that's too. What were they? I will freely admit that there's a, there are noticeable differences between the characters in the movie and the characters in the uh, series. Not just the vo- the change in voice actors, but also behavioral styles, and so therefore, it's a harsh start when you have to g- kind of go in blind, knowing that the audience will have seen an introduction, but you have not. Yeah, that, that's not fair. That's not fair. Why didn't they just but show it, them the what the movie was like, or was it the the series in because, production way before the movie was uh, even in production? The series was in production at the same time the movie was in production. No. Well, then maybe they should have just communicated with the studio that's uh, responsible for the movie. Like, now, I, what it could have should have. And in all honesty, maybe and you're right. They should. Sorry. Well, you're right. They should have, but. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Maybe they did. Maybe. We got no idea. Did they talk about it? Like they did? Did they then? Uh, I was at, uh, let's see, this was at Everfree Northwest, where Imalu and the and Sunny and Izzy's voice actresses were talking about the Rush production and some of the difficulty that comes with it. Yeah, I, I can just imagine how they they were <laughs> like uh, <laughs> an example is how does okay um you're su- you're supposed to realign the emotions going for is like rage and anger, all right one person's rage and anger is not possibly the same as another person's rage and anger so <sighs> same feeling different delivery. So. My thing is that now that the the studios are having more time to see what has come before, I predict that things will change in the show, that you'll find a bit more of balance. Doesn't wipe away character interpretation and, and creation at the start, but you may find an uptick in the in the production. Mm-hmm. And-, and let's be fair that in G1, uh, G1, G4, with Twilight and Company, they sounded different. The animations were a little different. The stories were different, and not all of them good. True. We, we had a the, lot of bugs that were memorable. Therapy. And maybe that's part of the charm. We don't have as much here. I mean, I still want to know what happened to Jazz's ears. <laughs> Whose ears? Jazz's ears. I'm guessing it's a, an animation error that happened. Yes, her, her ears are strangely absent in these eight chapters. <laughs> oh, in G5. Yep. In G5. But uh, shows evolve as they go. And that's one thing. So while G5 might not feel like the same lightning in a bottle that uh, G4 became, G4 needed a little time to get running as well. True. but To be noticed, to be celebrated. And then it took on a life of its own. I think we need to give G5 a little bit more time. That, that's true. I mean, granted that um, the way... For me, the biggest problem is that the way that it's being distributed. Uh, and I, the way I mean is that... Just imagine this. You start off with the movie. Okay, that's <coughs> good. A wide reach of audience. A lot of people uh, can watch the content. That's awesome. That's really awesome. But the delay for a bit okay I, I guess you just need to get things done all right now the special that came out all right that's the continuation and then you announced that you're gonna have shorts on youtube and the way that they do that was very hard to follow through especially with how hasbro is um updating their playlist for the quote-unquote YouTube series, which I got no idea if this is canon to the special that's coming out with season, uh, season two, season two or series two. Um, let me see. I opened up the wiki just to make sure. 
uh, they say that it's Make Your Mark Season 1. Yes, so with Make Your Mark Season 1, is that even canon to the Tell Your Tale series? At this point, I, I've given up trying to keep track of what's Season 1, what's Season 2. It's just go. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what I mean by, f for me personally, that Season uh, G5 is just very messy. Well, it's also quite the change in delivery, as you say. You have t you have make your mark uh, on Netflix, tell your tale on YouTube, and tell your tale seems to try and fill in the gaps make between make your mark. And that's oh man, and it, it's a, it's a very fascinating idea. I do love it, but the problem is that doing so makes you segment. <sighs> makes it very confusing and s separates the experience like oh god we're not even talking about the podcast <laughs> the, the podcast is one one other thing oh yeah norman about that did you maybe listen to that i mean either of you if you listen to that uh, you know honestly you no know, man like i have podcast habits and no man <laughs> i confess i too have not yet uh i've not yet Listen to them. Have you? Jacob? Too much else going on at the yeah, moment. True that. Jacob, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, against my better judgment, I finally decided to look at the G5 movie today in preparations for what we're talking. Um, oh. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It was okay for what, it, for what the story was. But unfortunately, I have to agree with Joss Scorcher on this one. A sequel shouldn't, yeah, a sequel shouldn't be compared to its predecessor. No, I'm sorry. Uh, G five shouldn't be compared to the G four. Yeah, to, uh, to G four, just because it's uh, well the pre uh, the previous generation. The However, because G five is a direct sequel to G four. And it's in the same continuity, by all right, it should be. I, uh, well, compared to this He said the void! <laughs> I, what did I say? I agree with... Oh, God damn it, not again. I, I full-heartedly agree with this statement, because, yes, um, judging G5 as its own continuation or its own story, it's pretty good. The story is passable, like... It has interesting topic. It has, it has interesting things going for it, but the major flaw for it is that G four is attached to it. Yeah, exactly. If it wasn't, then like, hey, cool, this is awesome. Like, I don't mind. I, 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 I want to see what G five does and how it makes it different. But since it's attached to G four, we want to think like, you know, we have a lot of questions saying that. What the hell happened for them to lose magic? And no matter what is gonna happen, no matter what they say, it's never gonna be a good resolution to what was set up. I mean, I'm sure that they have a story lined up to explain why everything happened. Oh, oh, it is, oh, it is Norman. It is Norman. It's in the G5 comic. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not gonna get into that. Yeah, not yet, at least. enough already, but god damn it. But but you, <laughs> on top of that, the comics. But you see, see, this is what I mean. This is what I mean when uh, we're we're doing this because okay, in G four, the comics are B tier canon. Uh, they're the thing that is just fillers, fillers for stories to make characters interesting or so on. Uh, if it doesn't match up with the series, hey, it's okay. At least it has a story behind it. This one, no, because it's related to the main story. It explains why certain things happen, and that exactly, and it, that that frustrates me because me as a I hate to say this, but as a casual G five watcher, I'm trying to go down the 
quote-unquote ladder of how should I consume this and try to understand how... Oh, sorry, try to understand what is going on. Because, yes, uh, the flow is supposed to be um, new generation, make your mark, the first one. And then uh, I'm lost. <laughs> because yeah. I, I got no idea where to look <laughs> after this one. <laughs> Honestly, I think this series would have been better off if the, if uh, the movie didn't happen. It was already just uh, tell your tale. It was more focused on the comedy instead of... Uh, no, no, that. no. I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with that one because tell your tale... If tell your tale was first, it would have ruined G5. No, I mean, you still have to make a better introduction because the Taylor, Taylor or it's basically, uh, well, it's already expecting you to know that you've seen the movie. Yeah, I mean, um, okay, so you're saying uh, New Generation, then Tell Your Tale, something like that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I don't know. Silver, What do you? F what's your opinion on Tell Your Tales? Because for me personally, I dislike it. <laughs> Well, actually, it's been growing on me. Oh, okay. Uh, there have been a few really good ones, a few good gems. I actually think they do a better job with Sparky Sparkaroni, Sparky. which, boy, uh, uh, I have stuff to talk about with that. That's the dragon, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Because, hey, dragon uh, magic, it does whatever now. But uh, I find it a fun, entertaining, but short. It's, it's just like a little... Snacks, little nibbles. It's like five minutes long. Yeah, it's never the. It's never going to be a full episode series in and of itself. And hence the YouTube distribution, which is kind of smart. See, they do a lot of smart things with G five, like five minute shorts on YouTube, so it's easily consumable and whatnot. I mean, it is smart. It is ideal for the format that is going. The, sorry, the format that it's going with but to keep up with stuff and like you mentioned before Silver is to in between for make your mark so it's kind of like wait what is going on now I'm so confused yeah I think one of the problems is also well the animation like what was said earlier uh, I think the previous recording the the stigma that uh, 3D is superior because it requires some kind of advanced programming skill to make it work. And well, uh, consider, in considering Make Your Mark exists, well, it's a 3D, so it kind of loses that cartoony aspect that was present in G4. Like, what what was that ep uh, episode with uh, Pinkie Pie's Twitchy Tail? Uh, oh, uh, feeling pinky keen. Yeah, feeling pinky keen. That was pro. I, I think in the first season that was probably one episode where it was the most cartoony in every aspect, like the faces they were pulling, the quick transitions, the body extensions or whatever. Well, unfortunately, uh, G 5s uh, series. Well, I don't know when you think like shit ton of. Uh, I don't know. It, it just doesn't uh, offer that much flexibility like uh, Tell or Tell does. Like, uh, let me give an example. Arguably one of the worst 3D animations, uh, which... Uh, hold on. You've heard of Food Fight, right? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I heard of, watched a review of, have not seen the actual movie. Here. Right. Well... Uh, Basically, the whole thing, you know what the thing behind it was, so what happened. Money. During the production. <laughs> yeah. Well, basically, they sank a shit ton of money uh, to develop it. And then apparently their work was stolen, so they had to do the whole thing from scratch. Oh, wow. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there are some test animations of the original Foot Fight that are on YouTube where it looked... Well, it tried to mimic the old Looney Tunes 2D animation, but it was 3D. Hmm. Yeah. And, yeah, and that's why I, I think uh, that's one of the reasons why Terror works better. 
than make a mark because uh, it offers better uh, ways to well put the whole cartoon logic to uh, to use, especially because uh, it can be uh, made like on a weekly basis, kind of like South Park. Oh, Meanwhile, wow. for the three D animation, you have to spend like weeks, months, even. Ah oh, man, um, I I I don't know how things are done and whatnot, but to me personally, once you have a rig, uh, things smooth, uh, things flow smoothly. The only thing that takes time is just making sure it looks good, it functions right, and nothing breaks when you render it. And yeah, um, South Park, how come they do things easy? Because they have a rig on standby. Just insert topic here and voice flaps go. Yeah. So and, uh, There's also the example of uh, that, uh, what was it, Teen Titans Go. Like, mm. We don't talk they... about Teen Titans Go around now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Teen Titans Go is not that bad. Remember, Raven with legs. God damn it. Well, there's that, but then there's also the all the times when they try and try to dunk on the critics of the show. Yep. Oh, man, I think man. one of the worst one was the one where they, where they tried to defend the uh, what was it? Thundercats roar. Oh god, no! Man. Oh god, I'm oh, a... I'm close to taking off my headphones right now. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Just press the play you're, you're... button on what I said, and you can uh, uh, loosen oh, steam. <laughs> Uh, so you, you're you're giving him scary flashbacks. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember hardly because I remember Thundercats Roar as a trailer. I'm trying to remember if it came out. Like oh, it came out. Did it? And died shortly thereafter. See, some people don't really understand why Teen Titan Go work. And that's just because it's the generation of the time and how they're doing things. Somehow they got lucky and it just works. Well, it's also very cheap to make, uh, I believe, in Flash Arts. And Cartoon Network promoted the hell out of it. I'd swear Teen Titans takes up 90% of their, of their schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. But anyway, back to ponies, G5. Back to ponies, so, please. Yeah, yeah, spe speaking of which, uh, yeah, I I'm just going to torment you for a little second because it uh, goes into the next point that I was going to make. Well, uh, Thundercats was made by a guy who never liked uh, Thundercats. Oh, God, no, that's a bad idea. Yeah. And now we look back to how G4 started with Lauren Faust. Like, uh, she already had, like, uh, uh, quite a bit of things under her belt, like uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Powerpuff Girls. So, when Hasbro uh, came to her and, well, you know what Hasbro was like back in the day with uh, G3 and G3.5. <laughs> uh, but, okay, I I'm just going to I summarize... St I still I still remember. I still. I. I still remember when I watched the Bronies react for the G three series. Oh, yeah, but okay. basically, Lauren Faust uh, did G four out of her love for the original series, since she was a big fan of My Little Pony. And when you actually love something uh, in in the product you make, it it actually shows that, and that's one of the reasons why I don't know. How many people behind G5 actually li liked, uh, well, even like G4 or even G1, for that matter, or any other uh, generations before that? To, to be honest, we don't know. Um, nobody stepped out and said, I love this series. Not like yeah. G4. I mean, to be honest, the only person that could have loved G uh, Ponies was Lauren, and everybody working on it just wanted the paycheck. I mean, that could have happened. Well, I don't think that's entirely true because you can see the quality of what they put out. Granted, it became stronger with time, 
Oh, yes. But there was a passion, maybe not for My Little Pony, but to do a good job. Mm -hmm. That's true. That That is clearly true. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that statement there. And that's why G4 was special. It, it worked because the people, everybody, uh, from the writers, from the animators, from the voice actors, from, like, just everybody, they love working on this and the feedback they're getting it was unheard of like just think about it right just think about it you work on a show for years now and nobody really knows check shit nobody who knows whatever right uh, you've never been invited to any conventions and so on blah 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 you, you're you're nothing until you work on ponies. Wow, thanks. <laughs> until, you, until you work on ponies. And then people just say, Oh my God, you work on ponies? Come to a convention. Now we talk po ponies. Like, wait, what? What is this? I What? <laughs> and that literally happened. And just because of that, a lot of people got opportunities to shine and so on. So yeah, ponies is something special. So that was the power of G four, but G five, I I'm not sensing that. Same here. But silver, you went to a lot of cons. So prove us wrong. Tell tell us that a lot of people who work on G five attend conventions and so on. Well, let's see here. I mentioned Everfree Northwest, we had Imalu and two of the voice actresses, mm -hmm. but we haven't yet gotten a lot of G5 folks at the conventions yet. This, I think Everfree was quite the test. I think it worked out very well. Aside from the fact that one of the, one of the guests got COVID. Oh, that sucks. Oh. By the way, did anybody from the show background, like directors or so, whatever, did they came back, came to any conventions, invited or not? I'm sorry to say that usually the production staff usually does not get invited to conventions. It's voice talent that really, and uh, artists that really draw the crowds. Yeah, I mean, that, that's unfortunate, but true. And that's what I mean, because when you take a look, see at um, G4... We, we know about the writers. We, we meme about the writers um, who now... Oh God, I mean, I, it's been so long since I mentioned his name. Um, hang out with Dusty Cats a lot. Um, uh, who? AC Racebest? No, no. Um, one of the writers. He did the final episode for season three. Larson. Amy Larson. Oh, Larson. So, yeah, Lar Larson came, uh, became, quote-unquote, a Brody celebrity in the fandom and so on, and he was uh, a writer for the show. So, yeah, uh, and then a lot of background people got highlighted and so on and became kind of celebrities in their own right. So, that's, that's what I'm saying about this one, too. We, we didn't really have that kind of pool in G5 and not like for trying but I, I just don't know that's the thing well you gotta give it time because there's also this little thing called COVID ah, yeah, true. which makes and a lot of the production team is not here in America ah yes that's also true oh god yeah where are they now Ireland is it well see here that was where uh, Boulder Media but that's been sold off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I'm less sure of. Yeah, so, oh man. Th this is what I'm feeling like. All of the... Like Jacob mentioned before, lightning in a bottle because everything was right. Everything was planned at the right moment. Like, things just went perfectly well. Well, you got it. And I'm saying give a little more time for things to work out for this generation. Maybe it's not 
Don't look for instant success. Look for improved quality. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that, yeah, we should get instant success. Like, this should be a kick right. And I'm feeling that Hasbro might think that this is going to be a kick right because the bronies are just going to latch on to G5 like how they latch on to G4. And I'm feeling that they're hugely mistaken on that aspect there just because the fandom enjoys something doesn't mean it's going to um, hit twice it might not be the same thing anymore and they took their sweet time getting g5 out and by that time around a lot of other media came out and a lot of the brony fandom jumped ship to other things <laughs> And, well, you can enjoy multiple things at the same time. So, we'll see. They might come, folks might come back, they might not. That is true, that is true. Oh, boy. So, let's, I, I don't know. I mean, is everyone satisfied? Because, like, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot missing here that we didn't talk about, but... Well, I can tell you from my time at uh, Cider Fest... Mm-hmm. The weakest aspect of the show, I feel right now, is Sparky Sparkaroni, the dragon. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> People, at first, I only knew of, like, Dusty, Cat, and Paleo Steno not really liking Sparky. But, boy, howdy. People cha- People made it known at the convention. Oh, no. They do not like the Sparkaroni. Oh, no. Yeah, that was too expected. I mean... They didn't like uh, Flurry Heart either when she first came out. I mean, Flurry Heart had a lot of problems to her, and one of the biggest problems was a horn and a wing. Hmm. Uh, that one wasn't really the. At least for me, it wasn't the problem. But Park is like a giant walking contradiction. <sighs> How so? Well, the whole wing thing. Uh, ah. I mean. <laughs> You you are a contradiction. Flurry Heart is a contradiction. <laughs> Why? She has horns and wings, and she's a natural born unicorn. Like what? <laughs> Explain. It was our Luna and uh, no. Celestia. I don't. Well, think so. there's never been a naturally born unicorn within Equestria. Yeah, yeah but which may just mean that the, that they were born before Equestria's formation. Oh, man, I mean, but I do understand why, okay, the contradiction to Sparky is something, but one of the biggest problems with Sparky, I haven't watched this, by the way, I am I could be just stucking out of my ass, but uh, I've just watched Make Your Mark and a bit of uh, Tell You Tale to get a general feeling of this, but one of the problems with Sparky is that he is an annoyance. He's just so there. Ba- Sorry. So basically, he's a character who triggers the conflict. All yes. The time. It yeah. feels it that way. As much. It, it feels that way. He he's the, um, oops, did I do that? Or oops, um, looks like we have to get that thing again. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of which, the second uh, walking contradiction, the whole quote-unquote dragon magic. Um, you know what? That, that is too far removed from whatever this world wants to tell us because what happened to the world in general? <laughs> yeah, that reminds me... Uh, since we're going to talk about this topic, I suddenly remember... To... Way back uh, before the movie came out, there was an interview regarding the setting, the lore, and everything else that uh, developers talked about it. And I immediately went, uh, I don't know how to put it. That's me uh, cringing. (laughs) Mm. Hold on. Let me just uh, give you the link to the article. What, there you go. What, what did he say? Uh, here it says, 
With Amur, we started develop we start development and made the decision to expand the world of My Little Pony rather than starting from scratch with total brand new uh, re re uh, reinvention. We found ourselves with this whole decade of storytelling and really rich lore, and it felt wrong to walk away from all of that. Uh, where's that lore now? I mean, it's there. <laughs> like, think about it. Okay, whatever they their their statement there is quote unquote true. Uh, they had a decade of storytelling, and it would be a waste for them to kind of leave it behind. But at the same time, too, they didn't want to get tied down by previous lore. So why not we just integrate it to whatever we have, but in a very confusing and convoluted way so in worthless way because then you you got the easter eggs in there and then you put Grogar's barrel right over there on the display for everybody to see <laughs> I, uh, mm. it has a certain ring to it yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> okay but I okay I, I am quite excited for the universe and lore i i am very curious of what happened to the world granted everybody who was a g4 fan is curious to see how twilight screwed things up <laughs> and everyone yeah, that's putting... another matter i think that the whole reason why they decided in the first place to ma to uh, make uh, G five become in continuation of G four is to the drawing the already uh, set fan base. That I don't mind that to be honest, but the fact of the matter is that oh my god, this is just going to be another warp silver says uh, you have to um, down a character to elevate another. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that, that's what the, that's what that's mine too. Ah, oh, Jesus. This feels like it. Like, huh? Let's mm. let's put uh, somebody down to elevate this character, or let's put G four down to elevate G five. It feels that it's it basically some... Disney Star Wars the sequel all over again. Mm. Ah, I've heard that comparison many a time. But to be honest, um, it could. be be an untruth it could be unfair but silver uh was my statement true well i've always wondered why people assume it was twilight who screwed up eh, because she was a princess well we all we know for right now is that uh opaline was somehow involved and she caused a whole lot of ruckus mm. maybe a fracas but right. you know better, or Silver. Or dare I say, a Cushmaclaver. Opal line. Oh, wow. uh, funny enough, um, uh, reported on her name today, Opal line Arcana. Yeah. So, we're waiting to see what that all entails. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready to write off Twilight, but I understand... Yes, it is frustrating to see, to be told that our heroes... Their happily ever after wasn't quite so perfect. Oh, I, I don't. But at the same time, I find that unfortunately true to life. It's never as simple as okay, we won, therefore we've won forever. Oh, I mean, I I don't mind the world kind of going into chaos because well, uh, nothing is perfect. Uh, nothing is perfect, and nothing lasts. For, um, nothing lasts forever. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe I'm just overplaying the fact that hey, uh, Twilight screwed things up, lol. But nah, um, well, to be honest, I, 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 why did it happen? What happened to make it go that way? But at the same time, to all the hard work that was put in with the dragons, the Abyssinians, the dog people, the bird folks, and so on, like all that hard work went to waste exactly and there's the and there's the comparison to uh disney star wars sequel like no oh look this character's got happy ending no nobody gets a happy ending <laughs> but 
that's basically pretty much the the case for just about any other uh, fran franchise that's come out in like the last decade. It happened in Star Trek. It happened in what Doctor Who with the I don't know which ones even. <laughs> Pick one, <laughs> but still yes. Basically, uh, they may and they have to make room for the quote unquote better characters. To be uh, to be the winners here, mm. because if, if if you don't put it down the previous characters who were already established to be really good people, how are you going to make the new ones in, in any better? Eh. That's how you get uh, Marae Sue. <laughs> Marae Sue. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like an oh, interesting character. <laughs> Am I gonna have to pay Medi now as well? <laughs> mm, well, that, that's between you and the pink pink corn. I already have to pay her out. Oh god, no, I already did. I'm gonna have to pay tax now. Oh, god, no. Mm. But 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 um, I, I I don't know. I mean, I I am willing to sit down and binge watch whatever I need to just catch up. But I don't know, guys. Like. Is it me or do I just feel unmotivated? Well, it may be you've been doing this for a while. Taking a break to enjoy something else isn't a crime. I guess you're right. But at the same time too, I am very curious because the comic the, the comic is very fascinating. And also, uh, remember when we talk about the new generations thing like huh there's only five of them where's the sixth one and i am to assume and quote unquote discover that is misty is that her name miss quite possibly misty uh give a second because i i she might be the sixth we don't yeah, know okay so it's not confirmed yet all right uh, like was she, is she the six? That I mean, makes sense, I guess. Feels like it because she's a unicorn. <laughs> Wait, there's two mint. Oh, minty and misty. Okay, alrighty then. <clears throat> alrighty then. So yeah, M maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. It feels like she's going to be the six ranger. Who knows? Well, we'll find out, but don't say Six Ranger, I'm still sad. Ah, okay, the Six and Titan. <laughs> ah, not helping. <laughs> oh, you're so cruel. I, know, I can be. But yes, um, but anywho, uh, is there anything more that we want to add to this conversation, or have we reached the goal? Uh, well, all I say is I'm still hanging in to see uh, what more comes of it. I probably won't be able to cement what worked and what didn't work until, truthfully, the series is done. Mm. I mean, in some ways, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but it there are lessons to be learned from this series, one way or another. Mm. All right, all right. And Jacob? Uh, I don't know. I I, ha I had the top uh, something uh, earlier that I wanted to say, but... It sort of slipped my mind at this point. Ah, uh, all right. God damn it. And yeah, I, I'm just pondering and thinking about what made G5 work, or at least try to work, is that it's branching out. It's branching out to many different segments of the market and media. Uh, for the show itself, I am very entertain with how they release their thing um, they release a movie to start the show uh, Netflix special with Make Your Mark and then a YouTube series that they publish um, a 8 episode season 1 for Make Your Mark season 1 so that's very fascinating and the way that they're reaching out is very interesting also with video games like We've been clamoring for games since G4, and the best we got was some 
uh, mobile games that had questionable quality. Hmm. And with G5, we still have mobile, but at the same time too, we had console games that we had been asking for since G4. The closest that we got was them fighting herds. Which got ceased and desist. Yep. <laughs> and transformed into something else. Yep. Uh, technically, it was fighting as magic, but then turned into them fighting herds. But still, it was yep. it was the closest thing that we had to G4. But now G5, we had a console game uh, named... Uh, give me a second, because I need to open the Wikipedia, because that thing is always there. Uh, My Little Pony Adventures in Maritime Bay. Yay. Uh, so, that's there. And what else? Um, mobile games on the yeah 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 uh, that there too, and yeah, C could you just imagine the reach? Well, we'll see how far that reach extends. Yeah, oh, I I promised the audience at home that I'll talk about Hasbro and stuff, but I I'm not hundred percent sure if this is kind of related to it or not anymore. Well, Hasbro's got its own problems. Mm, true. Not sure how they'll affect Pony. Yeah, but but it's by the same time too, I do have feelings that with the way that Hasbro is looking right now, and I mean by Hasbro's stock, because its stock is not looking well. It is low. And the thing is, uh when company has low market value, they try to bump it up by selling more products. Selling more product means that uh, their financials just go up. But I don't know. Um, it seems that all of this happens because they try to milk the magic cow and that didn't go too well. Ponies, we've been used to this by now by them selling us product and we buy product if we want to. I forget, did are our our pony toys popular? Well I keep putting them out, but I I don't know. That's the thing. I've never been sure on that on that aspect of the marketing. Yeah, I mean back in the days when we were in G four <laughs> I mean we we're comparing G four now. Oh boy goodness. Uh, back in the days when we were looking at G4 stuff, we had a lot of toys, uh, especially um, um, in terms of plush, uh, li licensing mostly, but um, plush figures, um, books, and uh, other things. Like, one of the most popular ones that I remember was the Funko Vinyls, those huge mm. vinyl toys that are quote-unquote not really life-size but they look real good with their molded hair and so on and Hasbro kind of jumped on the bandwagon with their Guardians of Harmony line of figures you remember those Silva? oh yes I still have them those are awesome uh Discord the Discord one was really awesome uh the Celestia versus Lu Nightmare Moon was Good too. Twilight and Chrysalis? That, that exists, right? Uh, Twilight and Tempest. Uh, Twilight and Tempest. Wasn't Twilight and Chrysalis? No. Oh. Oh, Alright. Chrysalis had her own yeah, thing. Okay, Chrysalis had her own thing. And if I'm not mistaken, Trixie and Starlight? Yeah. yeah those, those were officially done by Hasbro themselves. And those were great. Uh, right now we're getting nothing close to that as of now but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong like maybe we have to wait and see well again Guardians of Harmony came out in the later era of the G4 I'd say around season 7 I think it was 2017 yeah it so, was the uh, annual 2017 mm-hmm so you got to give just a little bit more time. But at least, what I mean is, I, I mean, they could have jumped on the quote-unquote figure with proper main bandwagon 
I don't know. I mean, I feel like probably they'll do it soon enough. I guess they just need to get more traction. Well, we'll get. Like I said, we got to give it a little time. True. True. Oh well. <laughs> Well, that's I, I guess that's about it. Like I, I wanted to talk about Magic the Gathering and whatnot, but it doesn't seem right. Doesn't doesn't seem to fit the uh, theme of today's thing. So yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna drop that. Well, don't worry. Ma magic is going to be talked about for a good time to oh, come. Yeah, I mean, a lot of places are doing so. Even the Wall Street Journal. My goodness. Yep. So yeah. Um, as for today's topic, uh, yeah. As for today's topic, why isn't G five doing so well to compare to G four? I guess time. One of the few things I noticed is probably the release, probably the way that it's been consumed. A lot of factors, to be honest. But in the end, I or maybe it's just the lack of uh, apathy from the creative team probably i mean that's one way to look at it but in the end the show is there and they're still doing it uh it's announced that they are doing a season two for uh make your mark so that's cool and the comics are running strong isn't that right silver I think so, but I don't have the numbers to prove that. I mean, oh, right now I remembered. <laughs> well, uh, you remember it. something that I missed. Uh, like uh, I, I'm not sure. I forgot what. How was it with the friendship is magic comics? But uh, I I think it was like in advance you got like one or maximum two uh, cover pages for the next issues. However, for this uh, for the G five comics, we're currently on what like like what uh, issue five. So are we, are we on issue five right now on G five comics? Yeah, I think or six. I think we're on coming up on six. Right, and they've already released the covers for like twelve ish uh, for the issue twelve. Yep. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think one of the telling signs that, well, they're not too confident that G5 is going to be uh, a long stayer is that they're trying to pump out as much, uh, I don't know, official stuff as possible, even if it's something as small as co uh, cover, uh, covers for the new comic issues. I don't know. I, I, I doubt that because covers are just covers. Yeah, but why release them for like issues that you're gonna get like in five months? I mean, they're covers that are uh, commissioned by artists. Like, issue 12 is done by Trish Forster. Uh, if you guys don't remember who Trish Forster is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she's Pixel Kitties on DeviantArt. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's kind of a very popular artist. Um, she's doing her own thing with Jay Foskett, I think, uh, about dogs. I, I forgot. Stray yeah, dogs. Stray dogs yes. Yeah, she, she, she's doing that. So yeah, um, covers, you know, honestly, doing a cover for a comic doesn't really mean anything. It's just that whatever the commission uh, described to the artist to do is that. I mean, Jacob, you should know this, right? Yeah, but I still think, uh, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, in the previous generation, we didn't have something like this, where they were like months in advance shown what the car for the next issue is going to be, because sometimes it's even that's even a spoiler for what happened. No, yeah, true. But at the same time, too, this is one of those things where G4 never, sorry, ponies back then never had a proper comic. And the way that they did it was kind of traditionalist. 
now um, being hip and cool with the kids, yo, they're trying something new. And I don't know, like, I haven't read it to figure if it is working or not. But I don't know, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I haven't read the series yet, so I don't really know or feel how this is going to pan out. Silver, well, you you read the whole series up to now. Uh, is the yes. cover spoiling you on stuff? No, the if anything, the covers speak to a, <coughs> excuse me. They speak to a larger conflict, but it may not reflect the the contents of the issue. <coughs> all right, you know, all right, you know. So yeah, I mean, covers are just covers. Like they don't really matter, and it brings up a strong point. Or a strong motto of don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I I think that doesn't apply sometimes, honestly. Sometimes if, if the car looks like crap, then the, the whatever's inside is going to be crap as well. <laughs> mm. I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, that's not to. Uh, Make a snide remarks about the artist or anything, just saying like that. Uh, I I don't know. I, I still believe in the don't judge a book by its cover thing because if we were going to judge a book by its cover, shows shows that look good are not really that good and so on. I mean, yeah. But anywho, let's end it there because. Uh, if nothing else, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's anything more else to add, unless I'm wrong. So I'm gonna go. I think that's all. All right, I'm gonna round. <laughs> just to double check, I'm gonna go round the table. Silver, is there anything more? No, just gonna see what happens. That's all anyone can do. All righty then. All righty then. So Jacob, what about you? Yeah, I think that's all. All righty then. So um, as for me, I don't know. I'm 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 excited to go through it, but I need to go it in my own pace. And Silver, just another question for work-related stuff. How do we review this? Like G five in general, or the comics? Um, G- I mean, the comics are easy to go through because. It's one to six, one to you know, it just follow uh, followed by numbers, but <laughs> the series itself, the show. <laughs> Perhaps it's better to abandon the episode review format and talk more about the characters, ah. especially how they're presented across episodes and medium. Mm. All right, then I'll keep that in mind because with all the things that we're gonna get, I, I guess we still can review it traditionally for specials. Like winter wish day, mmm, yum. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so yeah, um, we will see how it goes because we've done with the comics. It was an awesome run of one hundred and two <laughs> issues. We've done with season nine of G four. So what's left to go to is to the future with G five and whatever more. Yay. <laughs> And to be honest, Silver, if we were to review everything, we would have reviewed the podcast. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, did you mention yeah, the podcast earlier when you were, uh, well, uh, counting what's, uh, oh. what G5 has to offer? Yeah, and that's, like, we we don't. We, we don't listen to it because I don't know. I I listen to other podcasts. But we already have you, Norman. We don't need to listen to that podcast. <laughs> I would just find that exceptionally meta. I know. Oh, God. Podcasters listening to the podcast. I mean, I do listen to other podcasts. All well, yeah. about video gaming and whatnot, but I... But you don't review them. That's true. I don't review them. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. This this is going to hurt the canonization about stuff. Okay, just a, here's the thing. The podcast format, from what I understand, is... They call in guests, talk about their stuff and what they do, and just, you know, get a feeling for uh, the stuff and play games and whatnot. But here's the thing. 
What if it's canon? What if whatever they're talking about in the podcast is canon to the show and series? Uh, oh man. my god, that's going to be that's going to hurt my head. Oh no! And wouldn't it be funny if they had a sponsor from um, some company like a VPN company or a food delivery service company? <laughs> Nay, VPN. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoa. I think I killed Norman there for a second. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna kill over faster than you, Silver. Oh, man. Yeah, and I'm sick. <laughs> uh, the the, the meta is just, uh, it's just hilarious. Oh, man. There's, well, there's, what, um, Hoof Dash? <laughs> Hoof Dash? Yeah. Hoof dash, where you can deliver food at a press of a button and then deliver food to your home. Ah. Or would that be stable dash? Stable, yeah, stable dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better. <laughs> oh, boy. Use code um, wings, something like that. So code 20% cooler. <laughs> oh, God. So, anywho, I, I think we reached out. Yeah, we reach the max to what we can talk about. <coughs> I, I say G five wins on that <laughs> because of the podcast. Yay! Well, I'm a clotles. <laughs> God. So, anywho, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at wgmail Oh man, you can also reach us at the Twitter. The shows to take on is at the show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Still, for we can good people find you, man. Under MLP Silver Quill on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube. And the YouTube holds links to the Patreon, where you can support after the fact. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And if there's a new comic out, check that Wednesday on Equestria Daily for my review. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Jacob, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yaka von Torka, uh, under Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading a story, Thermal Rising, you can find it on thinkfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in my dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and also stitch radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on... <laughs> Sorry. You can also catch us on printerweb.com. I'm just thinking because I said Facebook, and yes, that is a website, but is it really Facebook or Meta? Mm. I'm not on it, so I have no opinion. Me neither. I don't know, man. Here we just call it Facebook. Yeah, the the name change is just dumb. (laughs) Anywho, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vequil. I'm Jakob. And we'll catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. So, next project we're gonna do is to review the comics and probably the series, but the comics. The comics are going to be fun. But we still have another set of Transformers to get through. Comics first! Pony comics! Pony comics! But it is pony comics! Really, Norman, that's very anti-mechanist of you.